Welcome to Pennington Place. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, warm in the 50s, a little bit of rain, but life isn't too bad. Um, today I am making chicken pot pie. I got a quart of chicken out that I canned and some mixed vegetables. I uh, put them on the stove, got them good and hot, added some uh, chicken base, and then thickened that with some cornstarch. Uh, for my filling and now we're going to do the crust and this crust is my Aunt Edna's recipe it's a no fail pie crust you can't go wrong with this crust so we're going to start out with uh, four cups of flour and then we're going to add one tablespoon of sugar tablespoon of sugar we're going to add a tablespoon of salt So we're going to put all of our dry ingredients first. A tablespoon of salt. We're going to mix that up. And then we're going to put in one and three fourths cup shortening. I never measure anything, so forgive me here. I'm trying to do better with measuring. And since this is no fail, it doesn't matter if you're a little off, you're going to be just fine. Okay. So what we do with any pastry that we're making, be it crust or biscuits or whatever, when we have dry ingredients and we have shortening, we always work that in. You can do it with a fork, which takes a little bit longer than if you use a pastry cutter. Pastry cutter like this. This works a little quicker because it actually cuts it. That's why it's called a pastry cutter. I like my handle it's deer antler. My pastry cutter broke instead of buying a new one. We just uh, fashioned out a handle from deer antler and secured it on there. And actually it fits my hand perfect. Look at that design. So we're going to get this all cut in. It may take a few minutes here. Now I don't know how to make a smaller bag because this is going to do at least two pies. Um, whatever pies you're making, it'll do at least two, and then I like to have extra crust to put in the oven for the kids to put butter on with some cinnamon sugar. That's always a favorite. Okay. All-purpose flour, guys. Don't use your um, self-rising flour. It has to be all-purpose. Okay, there we go. We've got it blended in. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. I know this sounds odd, but believe you me, this works. Okay, so we've got the white vinegar. I've got a farm fresh egg here. We're going to do one egg. And then we're going to grab us a cup of water. Because it calls for a half a cup of water, and I find that sometimes it takes more. But then it might not take more because I don't measure. I'm really bad at measuring. I don't know why that is. It's got to be because my mom was that way. I'm going to use that excuse anyway. Now, 
even though there's sugar in this crust, you don't taste the sugar. I know when you do store-bought crust, you definitely taste the sugar. You taste a sweetness to it, and so they're not really good to do for pot pies. But with this, there's not a lot of sugar in it, and you don't taste the small amount of sugar. So this is great for regular pies. This is great for pot pies. Uh, any kind of pie you want to make. I do a lot of pot pies because I can. A lot of chicken and a lot of rabbit and a lot of duck. Because, <coughs> you know, I can't fit everything in the freezer. Okay, so we just about got it where we want it. I'm just going to get my hands in here. Because I'm a hands-on kind of girl. And the only reason I don't know how to cut this recipe is just because of the one egg. But then it's hard anyway because my eggs are different than store-bought eggs. Because we have chickens and they lay them and my eggs are larger than store-bought eggs. My eggs are pretty large. Let me show you one that I just got last night. This is one of the eggs that we just got last night. It's huge. So even that's hard for me to judge. Because actually that would be two eggs, I imagine. Okay, so like any pie crust, we're going to get a little flour out here. And I'm going to do half the crust. Get it rolled out. And get it ready in my pans. So I'll get this rolled out and get my cake pans, my pie pans out and get it ready and I'll get right back with you. So I've added my filling and I put a top crust on. Um, I've tried to flute my edges but I'm not real good at fluting edges. My grandmother could just whip them babies right around. Um, once I get the top on and I get it sealed and folded over, then I take a fork and I prick the top. That way um, as it cooks and if the insides start bubbling, they they have a, somewhere to go. They just don't bubble inside and then pop your crust or your crust don't balloon clear out and don't actually touch your insides. You want the air to escape so that your crust is laying on top of your, your inside. So I'll put these in a 350 oven for about 45 minutes or so and then I'll show you the end result. Okay, it's been close to an hour. I just got the pot pies out of the oven. I cut this one. We're letting it cool for the little ones. Um, the crust is amazing. It's flaky. It's soft, just like a crust should be. So, um, it's been close to an hour that they've been in the oven. So they turned out just beautiful. Um, some people like to baste the top of them with a little bit of butter or some egg whites just to give it a special look. But I'm plain simple girl, so this is how they are. Um, Michael is on his way home from Kentucky. He went to see his mom today in the hospital. Um, hopefully she'll be getting out soon. Prayers, if you could, come our way. Uh, that she get better and, and get home and get back on track again. So I hope uh, you enjoyed your time in the kitchen with me today. Please try the recipe. You're going to love it. You will never use another pie crust recipe again once you've tried this. Um, I'm a firm believer I've been using this recipe over 12 years now. Um, it's the only one I got. It's the only one I use. So you have a beautiful day until we talk again. God bless. Bye-bye.